I'd like to focus on three little verses from the scriptures in this story. First of all, from the famous 119th Psalm, verse 176, David writes, I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek your servant. And it's a reminder that uh, whether we are lost or saved, we still have this going astray issue. And thankfully, the Good Shepherd doesn't simply seek those who are lost from him in the sense of not saved, but those who have wandered from the path. He seeks those too. And how many times those of us who have already put our trust in the Lord Jesus have needed him to bring us back into closeness with him. But thank God for this, that the Lord Jesus, as the good shepherd, not only seeks those who are lost from him because they have no eternal life, but those who belong to him, who have also wandered, and he seeks them and brings them home. And then this famous um, promise that God makes in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34 and verse 16, where it says, I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away, bind up the broken and strengthen what was sick. This is a little section that's not only speaking about lost in the sense that a person has wandered away, but those who because of false religious leaders, have been actually driven away. How many people have lost their way in life because those who purported to be spiritual leaders were actually frauds, and they were actually driven away, not simply from their religion or from their church, but from the Lord himself, thinking that these people represented the Lord. And the Lord says, I'll bring them back too. And then, of course, the most famous of all, the words of the Lord Jesus in Luke 19, verse 10. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And I want to tell you a story about how far the Lord will go in seeking a lost person. Some years ago, many years ago, I was down in Florida, and... Um, a young man named Martin had uh, been walking down the street in Germany, and he had flunked out of university. And he met an old girlfriend, and she said, so what are you doing? And he was too embarrassed to tell her that he had flunked out of university and that actually he was jobless. And so he said, well, um, just kind of on the spur of the moment, uh, I'm going to sell my car and take the money and travel through North America, maybe South America too. Well, she was quite excited, thought that was pretty dramatic. And so when she left, he thought, why don't I do it? I've got nothing else to do. And so he sold his car and he had a relative in Florida. And so he came to this relative's house and the relative really didn't want him around. And the relative had a neighbor, Mrs. Gustafson, and she was always sharing the gospel. And she had talked with him and tried to invite him to come out to hear the gospel. And he wasn't interested. And then he began to scheme and thought to himself, I can satisfy Mrs. Gustafson by giving her a sinner to go to her gospel meeting, and I can get this young relative from Germany out of my hands and so he said to Martin, listen, there's a bunch of nice young people at this place. You can go and meet them. Why don't you go along? And so it was that Martin ended up coming to the Bible conference at which I was preaching the gospel. After the meeting, the young people took Martin along with them, and I went along. We went out to a restaurant, and they were very kind to him and, and curious about his life, and they shared the gospel, their own personal testimonies, it was really a wonderful environment for Martin to hear from these young people the gospel and what Christ meant to them. Well, he thought he might be traveling quite a bit. And I said, listen, if you get up to Canada, 
you come and see us. And I gave him my business card with my address. He said, well, I don't think I'm going to Canada. I'm probably going to go down to South America. And I said, well, you know, we're praying for you. Well, um, Martin decided instead to head north. And so uh, he went out hitchhiking and the first vehicle that stopped to pick him up was a Christian truck driver and began to share Christ with him. All the way from Florida up into Virginia, this fellow was paying for his hotel room, buying him meals, and giving him the gospel. Finally, somewhere in central Virginia, Martin had had it up to here, and he said, look, pal, I've had enough of this. Thanks for everything. And he got out of the truck, and he went looking for a job, and he saw a sign on a farm, help wanted. He walked down the lane, came to the house, and said he was looking to do some work, and so they took him in, gave him a place to stay, and he went to work on the farm. Well, the first evening, uh, the family invited him in for supper. And as they gathered around the table, they said, now, Martin, we love the Lord Jesus here, and, and we're going to give thanks for our food, and we'd like to pray for you. And here he found himself with this group of believers, this lovely Christian family. Uh, he worked there until he'd saved up enough money to travel on, and um, I was away preaching when my wife got a call from the local YMCA, and here it was Martin. And I'm afraid I hadn't told my wife about this, because he told me he wasn't coming to Canada. And here he was saying, you know, I met your husband in Florida, and he said I could come and visit you. And so she called me up and said, what's the story with, with, with this young man? Well, the young people again went and picked him up, and they brought him out to the meeting, and he heard the gospel. They took him out to a campfire, a bunch of young people getting together. And once again, he saw real live Christianity in these Canadian young people. He was going to head west, head up to Alaska. And my wife said, well, you know, my brother is actually leaving tomorrow, and he's driving up to um, northern Ontario. And so it happened that Martin ended up traveling with this Christian young man on the way up to their other brother, who, when they arrived, was actually putting up a gospel sign on the side of the road. And they had Martin up on the ladder, driving in the nails and putting up this gospel text along the side of the road in northern Ontario. Well, he was heading west. And what do you know, I was out in Edmonton, Alberta at the time. And he shows up in Edmonton. And Louise had connected with me. And so we went down and picked up Martin at the bus station. And that night we went out for supper. And we went to a couple's home. And as we were speaking with them, the lady of the house said, where are you headed next, Martin? And he said, well, I'm going up through Salmon Arm, B.C., on my way up towards Alaska. She said, my sister lives in Salmon Arm. And so arrangements were made for Martin to go and stay with this Christian couple in Salmon Arm, B.C. Well, Martin came out to the meeting, and I poured out the gospel to Martin. And afterwards, we sat in the home of a dear family there, the Waltons, as I shared the gospel. Well, it so happened there was a cousin of the Waltons who was not saved, and he came over and sat in the living room as I was sharing the gospel with Martin. Well, Martin got up eventually, went to bed, and I was sleeping in the same room. I was awake almost all night praying for Martin. He went to sleep. I don't think he had an anxious thought. But the cousin went back to where he was staying and got down on his knees and received Christ as his Savior. Martin was chased by the Holy Spirit all the way from South Florida to Alaska. The Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And I could tell many stories of people who fled their homes, perhaps, because of the gospel. My own Uncle Frank, who left 
a wealthy estate in, in England where his father loved the gospel and would bring an evangelist in and pitch a tent on the estate every year. And my Uncle Frank couldn't take it, and he fled to Canada. Tried to work in the fruit farms, but he wasn't used to manual labor. He'd been raised in a very lavish home with servants, and so he, he couldn't take the hard work, and he went and got a job in a machine shop. And as soon as he sat down at his position, he looked across, and here was a man with an open Bible. As he was working, he was reading the scriptures, and it wasn't long until he came and said to Uncle Frank, I'd like you to come out to hear the gospel. And running from the gospel, he ran into the arms of Jesus. And this is over and over again. Arnett McEntee, who has given his life to the service of God. When the war came, he joined the Air Force. His father said goodbye to him on the train and thought, I may never see Arnett again. Not saved. He got to Vancouver. He went to the base had hardly sat down in the Quonset hut when somebody came up to him and said, I'd like you to come with me tonight to hear the gospel. And he went out and heard Brother Robert McClurkin preach the gospel, and he put his trust in Christ. And Robert McClurkin wrote a letter back to his old father back in St. Catharines, and using the words in the little book of Philemon concerning Onesimus, he said perhaps he had to leave for a while so that he could return forever. I want to tell you, the heart of the Good Shepherd is still seeking and saving the lost, and he'll go to any lengths to find people and to bring them home. So if you've got people who've wandered away, or if you yourself have wandered away, I want to tell you there's somebody looking for you who wants to bring you home. I will seek what was lost and bring back what was driven away, bind up the broken, and strengthen what was sick. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The old preachers used to say, a seeking sinner and a seeking Savior will always find each other.